Hey there planners, today I am going to be going over some second quarter 2021 planning updates as well as setting up for the month of April. So go grab your planners and let's get planning. So I am coming to the last few pages in the month of March in my bullet journal. And uh, this is an A5 Stology bullet journal. I have been using it since January 1st. Um, these are my daily pages, but um, you all are familiar with seeing the monthly setup and all of my um, pages that I use, you know, each month to set up and then also what my daily pages look like. I have thoroughly enjoyed this um, Stology. This was a half year and I actually am gonna be, uh, have very few pages left um, um, at the end of this month and so it's time for me to move on uh, to the next book and so I started to just kind of reflect on how I've been using the Stology and my overall planning system you know I like to do this a, a few times a year particularly as we move into a new quarter um, I've also been sharing my Hobonichi A5 cousin and I picked this up um, not not long ago and started using it for daily pages um, just kind of writing things down in daily pages and you know I've done some uh, creative journaling and shared that with you all and so um, this has been really fun I'm enjoying the weekly pages the daily pages I'm just enjoying this as a memory keeper but I started I put down this spread uh, in the month of March as I was thinking about moving on to um, to the second quarter of the year and I I just wanted to capture what are all the things that I'm planning and then step through some questions to evaluate how my current system is working for me and how I may make some updates to that system as I move into um, you know April and the second quarter of this year so Again, I started with just what are all the things that I use my planning system for. I categorize them uh, by color coding as either work-related, reference-related, calendar-based, or non-dated. So non-calendar-based information. Once I had my complete list, I realized pretty quickly that for those work-related items, I am very happy with my work planning system and I don't wanna make any changes to that. I've also recently updated uh, Reference Planner and I shared a video on that. I'll link that down uh, in the description box below and with a card here above. I'm not, I'm not looking to make any changes to that right now. However, when I thought about calendar-based and non-calendar-based items, I've kind of got them in different places. And so I really wanted to think through, are there opportunities to streamline and use my planning system better? So I started by asking myself, what from my um, planning items needs to be with me all the time and what can really stay in my office or my craft room um, kind of stay stay um, stationary and so I made a list of that you know what are the things that I really do need to reference uh, with me all the time and then I asked myself what information kind of naturally goes together. Um, and I ended up with two lists where really one was calendar based and tied to specific dates and times. The other was memory keeping, lists, journaling, trackers, goals, research, you know, brain dumps, things like that, that don't necessarily, are, aren't necessarily tied to a specific day. And so I'll show you an example of that. Here is a two-page spread in my Hobonichi Cousin Daily Pages where I was just researching how to do um, dinner bowls. So kind of like burrito bowls or um, other bowls, you know, that you might get from restaurants. Um, I just thought this was a great idea. We're getting ready to step into a season that is very busy from an after-school uh, commitments type um, standpoint. And you know, this is an easy way for me to make some things ahead of time, do some chopping up some veggies and have this available to my family. But I just wanted to kind of get a game plan and some ideas together around how, how do you build a good dinner bowl. And um, so this has nothing to do with March 9th and 10th, but I needed a place to put this. So um, that's an example of a non-dated item. So they really did fall into these two categories. And so I started to think about, you know, I have these two planning systems. I have 
my Stology bullet journal in which I am creating calendar spaces and it's primarily used for calendar and then I have the Hobonichi Cousin which comes with calendar spaces but I'm actually using it in ways that don't really require calendar spaces and I quickly determined that that may not necessarily make a lot of sense <laughs> and so I thought about what if I moved calendar, all calendar based items into the Hobonichi Cousin. So the Hobonichi Cousin is really awesome because it has, you know, yearly, monthly, weekly, and daily pages. And so you can divide things up and really determine what is the best way to track and keep that information. And so I mapped out what would it look like between monthly, weekly, and daily um, to take the stuff that I'm already planning that's calendar-based and plug them into those areas. And then, you know, what would my bullet journal be for? Well, my bullet journal would, instead of being a place where I am creating calendar pages and um, putting in calendars, it would just be for all the non-dated items, like brain dumps and research and creative journaling and, um, you know, uh, meal ideas, notes, you know, all, all of that stuff, uh, planning any channel related stuff, all of that stuff would go into the bullet journal where I don't have dated pages already in there. And that would prevent me from having to create dated pages. So that's really, and I ended with, yep, I'm doing it because it just made so much sense to me now that I have added the Hobonichi Cousin, to really use the Hobonichi Cousin to its actual intent um, and, and work with the design, it is just so fantastic. I have to say, I am loving this planner. Um, it's probably my favorite planner I've ever used. It Just the flexibility, it takes a while to get into it because there are so many different planning spaces. Um, but once you sit down and really decide how you want to use those different planning spaces, it just makes a lot of sense um, the way it's laid out and dividing different items to different sections. So as I move into setting up um, this new system and transitioning to the system, this is what you're going to see in the plan with me today where I am setting up for April 2021. All right, so step one, I need a new bullet journal. I am choosing to stay with the Stylogy. And so this is actually, I'll start by talking about the cover. The cover is a Kiki K cover that um, for an A5 journal, I found this on um, Amazon and I absolutely love the color. The quality is fantastic. It's got, um, you know, a pocket in the back. Uh, and then here's the inside where I have already started setting up initially um, my bullet journal for the rest of the year. So this cover I did, I will show you, I had to do a little bit of doctoring uh, on the cover because the cover itself had, um, and you can see it looks pretty rough here. I actually had to cut it open and remove this really stiff cardboard piece that was in the lining um, because it, it's good for reinforcing the spine, but it just prevented the planner from being able to lay flat. But you know, it doesn't really bother me um, that it, that hole is there because this is how I keep it. So it's completely covered and I can't see that anyway. Um, since I'm back here, I'll just show you that in the back cover, it does have uh, a pen loop. And then I've got on the back page, just a sampling of different sticky notes um, that I love to use. Uh, I talked about uh, these sticky notes, these smaller ones and the different colors that they came in, in a little mini haul portion when I did the day in the life of my planner video recently. Um, in the front of my bullet journal, I did some watercoloring. Um, the Stology pages, the, the paper is fantastic. It's not Tomoe River paper, but it is still really good um, with watercolor. And so I just did some watercoloring. I have talked about this recently. I am in love with this color palette. The blues, the teals, um, the pinks, the peaches, um, that color palette is just really speaking to me right now. So you're going to see this showing up quite a bit, but I just did a really simple pattern um, with circles and then some ink design and then just wrote bullet journal in here. In the pocket over here, I have some a few things. I'll start with this one. So this is actually an image that I found on Pixabay. Um, I pulled the image off, put it into Canva, added my word of the year. Um, and I just think this image, this Japanese artwork is beautiful. Um, it really encompasses to me 
um, my word of the year, which is flow. You can see the, the boat here. Um, the boat's on kind of a, a rough sea, and they are just flowing with the waves. And to me, this just is beautiful and really captures my word of the year. So I printed it out. I got it to the size I wanted, added the text in, and I printed it out and laminated it, and that's decorating my, my pocket. I did add in this little guy. Um, who I also am in love with right now. Um, this is uh, a little bunny that I watercolored and then just added hop on it, which I thought was perfect for my um, planner. Um, and he'll hang out here through um, through Easter. I've got a washi card here. I've got a um, an old uh, Hilton Honors reward card there uh, to help me cut washi when I need it. And then I've got some magnetic page markers there. So that's what's in my front pocket. I'm going to flip through how I've initially set up this bullet journal. If you want to know more about how to set up a bullet journal, and really from a beginner standpoint, I'm actually in the middle of a series right now uh, where I am talking about bullet journal uh, setup for beginners. And so I'll leave that uh, link down in the description box below in case you'd like to follow along step by step through just the traditional, simple uh, way of setting up a bullet journal. So the first thing I do have is my index. Um, I've actually got four columns here for index and you can see I've already started filling it out, but I think this is gonna be plenty of room um, for this bullet journal. If not, I will just add another index in later on, but I did go through and number all the pages. Um, this is a full year, a 365 Stology A5, so I do have um, 367 pages in this journal, so should be plenty of room to last me the rest of the year. Um, I did go ahead and put a 2021 and a 2022 year at a glance. Uh, this is a printable. I believe this came from Lovely Planner. Um, I will have the video linked down in the description box below where I talk about where I get all my printables from. Um, and uh, they're all free. So my favorite kind of printables are free printables. So that's what I look for. Um, but I just used some washi tape and taped these in. This is just for reference. Again, this bullet journal is not really going to be about calendar specific items. It's more um, those non-dated items, but I did feel like I needed this in here as a reference. Okay, um, the next two pages are two things that I love to have in every bullet journal I keep, and it's what's in this bullet journal and what do I want to do with my next bullet journal. So I've just got some, you know, kind of an outline for myself, and I'll continue to add things in here as I need to of what type of things go in this bullet journal. You know, non-dated items, bullet journal collections, brain dumps, research, journaling, um, you know, meal ideas, notes, planning any, uh, channel information, um, brain dumps, things like that. I will use this section as I'm going along in um, using this bullet journal as I come up with ideas of things I want to do different next time or things I want to try in the next bullet journal. I will um, add those into the here and then as I set up my next bullet journal I like to look back on these pages and see is there anything I want to pull in. All right, the next list is my master projects list. So I have recently fallen in, down the getting things done or GTD um, hole. And um, a master projects list is one of the items that um, the getting things done method really uses. And I, I think this is a great tool. So a project as defined by getting things done is anything, any action, uh, anything that you need to do that requires more than just one or two steps. Um, and so I'm keeping a list of those things here and then I will actually have project pages uh, dedicated in the bullet journal where I'm working more on these and I can you know reference those here but um, keeping this master list just lets me know what are the things that I need to stay keep on my radar I do have a wish list that I'm keeping um, my birthday is coming up pretty soon and so I like to keep a wish list I've already marked two things off it's tough when you keep a wish list because then you always know what you want so um, this next is just a quote page and then I put a someday maybe list in here and this is for things that um, maybe they start out on my master projects list but I realize pretty quickly it's just not something I want to tackle right now but I don't want to lose sight of it. Um, those things will come to my someday maybe list. Things also might come here out of my uh, brain dumps um, that I do as I'm setting up my planner so um, this is just a place to hold those items so I don't forget them. 
I've got a little red page flag here. Um, these page flags are really awesome. They're transparent. Um, they came in this big pack. I don't even know what the brand is anymore. I've had them for so long because there are so many of them. They last. They have lasted me forever. But um, I like to use, and there's good color variation here. So I like to use these just as quick references. I've got a red one here, and this um, indicates just the beginning of um, Planning Annie channel information. This is my uh, Planning Annie stats tracker, and I've got uh, January of 2021 through December of 2022 down the left-hand side, and then I've got some statistics that I want to make sure I track and measure, you know, um, YouTube subscribers, watch hours, views, pin, Pinterest followers, Facebook group members, things like that, that I'm just tracking um, just to monitor growth of this channel. I've also got a video ideas brain dump page um, where I'm capturing ideas, what the reoccurring videos are. Here's all the videos in the new um, bullet journal beginner series and then types of videos listed here. And this just helps me anytime I have an idea, I have a good safe place to come put it in there. Um, subscriber questions so I can keep up with those as they might turn into future videos or if I see something coming up over and over again I can make sure to address it and then just anything that comes out of my Facebook group that I want to make sure and track. This little tracker sheet is awesome. I love this template. This comes from Emily Lay. Um, it's actually made to be, and I, I covered it up with whiteout, but it's made to be a um, teacher checklist. So you would have like student names down the side and then maybe grades or assignments, things like that, that you would check. I turned this into a where is it uh, tracker for my planner. So I have listed across the top all the different places that I would keep planning information, like my personal bullet journal, which is this, uh, the Hobonichi Cousins, um, th my reference planner, the family bullet journal that sits on the kitchen counter downstairs, um, the uh, my Power Sheets goal planner, my work planner, and then OneNote is another place where I drop in digital things that can't really translate well into paper. And so I just have repeated that list over here, and then down the left-hand side I have uh, all the different types of planning um, things that I things that I use uh, for planning, and again, that brought, brings me back to the list I made in the Hobonichi cousin. You know all the things that get planned, and what I wanted is a quick reference for, especially as I'm kind of making changes to the system, when I'm wondering where things go or, you know, where where looking for something. I have a quick reference for where are where do those things live so you can see as some of them land in two spots like for future log i have one in the family bullet journal and i have one in the uh, hobonichi cousin um, for goals and actions i keep them in my personal bullet journal this book i also keep them in my hobonichi cousin and then of course they start out in the power sheets goal planner and i move them into the other areas so um, that's how I'm using this, um, just as a quick reference, and I've got this tabbed with an Avery tab so that I can easily find it. And, I, and this is probably something I will only use for a month or so as I'm getting adjusted to the new system um, and seeing if it's working for me. So on this next page, I've got um, a, an area where I was doing some research. So. Um, this is a great example of how I plan to use uh, this bullet journal. If you are part of the Planning Annie Facebook group, you saw me ask the question recently about a planner wallet combination, um, and that's me trying to find a creative way to get a Hobonichi Weeks and have a need to use a Hobonichi Weeks because I'm absolutely in love uh, with, with the Hobonichi cousin. I love the paper. Um, the Hobonichi Weeks is very intriguing to me, and so I'm thinking I might be able to find a way to use uh, a planner wallet co combo where I have just that most critical information with me all the time. But I've been doing some research about it, um, different options for covers, um, different ways that people are using a planner and a wallet together, and then what ideas about what would go in the planner. And then this is a brain dump section for uh, Planning Annie for the month of April where I mapped out what videos will be posted and what videos I need to um, actually film and edit in the month of April. I'll be using that when I set up April. I use this page just to plop down a bunch of stickies. So I realized as I, over the last couple of months, I have been writing down planner sizes and measurements and box numbers and things like that, grid spacing uh, on sticky notes that were just like 
all over my desk. And so I just decided this was going to be the planning, planner sticky note page. And I just started sticking them here. Um, and so, I, you know, I may do something else with this in the future. But again, this is a great example of how I plan to use this bullet journal. Um, very functional uh, and just to catch everything that's not date related. Um, and then here's the final thing I've done in this bullet journal so far. And I have picked up some fountain pens recently. Um, if you haven't seen my latest uh, pen haul video, I will link that down in the description box below. But um, I've been really enjoying playing with fountain pens and I needed to do some research on how to clean them. And so um, this was just some notes on some research that I was doing on how to clean fountain pens. Okay, so now I'm ready to set up this bullet journal for, for the month of April, and really all I'm gonna do is tip in this vellum. Um, I am thinking I'm probably going to post this uh, image in the Planning Any Facebook group in case anybody wants to use it in their planner. Um, it is a, an image that I made off Canva, so um, I pulled the, um, the grass and the Easter egg um, images off of Pixabay and then put them together in Canva with the uh, calendar. So I'm going to keep it really simple. I am just going to be tipping this in and then that marks the month of April in my bullet journal and then that's really it. Um, I will just continue to do uh, you know this type of brain dumping and research and um, you know, information as it's specific to, you know, where I am and what I'm interested in. And um, what I will do is go ahead and set up a two-page uh, brain dump spread for my monthly brain dump. I've got uh, my brain dump triggers list, and I'll walk through that. But I'm going to keep the setup in uh, the bullet journal really simple. And where you'll see me spending most of my time is in the setup of the month of April in my Hobonichi. So let me go ahead and get this tipped in. All right, so I've tipped that in. If anybody is interested in how I tip things in, I do have a video that's a really quick tutorial um, on how I do that. There's also a ton of other videos that other planners have made. Um, you know, it's just as simple as using some tape and uh, some sort of card. Um, this is actually a Dave & Buster's card. Um, but um, yeah, it's just as simple as using some tape and a card and kind of like you know, just taping it into the spine. So um, there's my April cover, and I want to set up a two-page brain dump spread and then uh, go through my brain dump triggers list. I've also set up um, on the back side of my brain dump triggers list, I have put together a planning routines, um, and this is updated. I had this already. I This is uh, something that I shared in the Planning Any Facebook group, but I did do an update on this for the new second quarter 2021 uh, planning um system. So moving non-dated stuff into bullet journal and dated stuff into Hobonichi. So I went ahead and updated these um, and kind of gave myself the walkthrough of how I set up my planner on a monthly and a weekly basis. And then also just kind of a cheat sheet about what goes in my daily pages in my Hobonichi. So, um, you know, step one of setting up monthly is to set up the two page brain dump uh, in my bullet journal. Now, one thing I will say that I've already decided uh, about the month of um, April is that April is going to be my purple month. Um, I love the color purple. My birthday is in April, and so I'm going with it. April is purple. Um, and you'll see that, you know, here in the cover, um, show up in the cover here. You're also going to see it show up in the month of April in my Hobonichi. Um, my goal is to use only purple ink and purple markers and just cover the month of April in purple. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set up the two-page brain dump spread here uh, so that I can walk through uh, all of my brain dump triggers and get everything out of my head and ready to go for the month of April. All right, so here's a pretty good start on my brain dump. I, I absolutely love this brain dump triggers list. I, I will actually go through it a couple times as I am setting up um, for a new month and also for a new week. I use this as well, but um, this just helps me get the big things on my mind. And then I'll also flip back through um, my bullet journal from the month of March and make sure there's nothing I need to pull in from there. But this just gives you an idea. Um, by the end of the month, I will have used this whole two page because I'll keep coming back here as I think of new things throughout the month. Um, and as I'm doing my weekly reviews, I'll add more things here. But 
um, this is a good start for me. So now I am ready uh, to move on to my next step, which is um, to start setting up the Hobonichi uh, for the month of April. I've got um, just a few things here. I've got a Hobonichi cheat sheet, which tells me uh, what goes in the monthly, weekly, and daily sections. And I'm going to keep this here, again, probably just for the first um, you know, month or two just to make sure I've got this ingrained as a new system um, and then I probably won't need this anymore. I've um, got a journaling card and a die cut here. I've got a few um, little cards to use for washi tape. I've got this um, Starbucks guy which I made myself. Um, I actually drew this and I uh, used some watercolor and then put a little sticker on it so I just I like the way he looks um, stick, sitting there and then I've got some uh, label stickers, um, some brush, la uh, br water brush label stickers there. All right, so for the month of April, I went ahead and I made my own sticker kits. Um, so this is what I'm going to be using. I did a little trial and error um, in the previous months as well. You can see, for example, um, I did my own sticker kit for the month of February. Um, I'm going to try to see if this works, but I'm trying to use that purple because, again, I'm really into purple right now. And so April is going to be the month of purple. Um, I made these stickers by pulling images off of Pixabay, putting them in the right size with the right background and lettering in Canva, and then I moved moved them over to um, the Cricut Access Studio uh, to actually cut them out on, print them on sticker paper and cut them out. If you're curious about any part of that process, I actually have a video about how I make my own planner stickers um, with or without a cutting machine. So if you're interested in that, I will have that link down in the description box below because it is so fun to be able to personalize your planner with your own stickers. Um, so let me pop these guys in. All right, so I'll say I am pretty proud about how that came out. I think that is beautiful decoration for um, my monthly calendar and it's just the right amount of decoration. I am The rest of the space is gonna be very functional, but that's gonna be perfect for, um, for you know setting the tone and the color code for the month of April. The other stickers that I made are some um, functional boxes and some uh, days of the week headers. So um, one of the things that is a bit frustrating about the Hobonichi uh, cousin is that the width of the boxes are different than any other planner stickers that I have. So all those functional boxes that I have will not really work. Um, you know, they don't have the perfect fit in the Hobonichi cousin. So I could have gone and bought a lot of um, sticker uh, sheets for the Hobonichi cousin, but I thought, you know what, I'm just going to make them until I make sure that, you know, I know what I need them for. I didn't want to buy a whole bunch of stickers if I wasn't even going to actually use them. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and lay down the first week's uh, stickers here um, so that I'm ready to go in the first week of April. All right, so I love the way that turned out. They are the right size. It is just the right pop of color on the top of the page. I wanted to show you, I did actually take the time um, back, going back to the very beginning of the weekly pages, I had an extra uh, weekly page that I used to map out kind of how I wanted it to look um, and how I wanted to use the weekly space. And so the way I've got it mapped out is, you know, weather, um, at the top, that's going to be where I track my weather, um, any special events or holidays, um, maybe stickers um, for the day go at the top here. And then I've got it broken down into events and, you know, really family schedules, appointments, things like that, that are time based. Um, and that block of time takes through 8 a.m. to about 5 p.m. Um, and then I've got a section for to do's here. Um, this is where I was just testing out other stickers, as you can see, happy planner boxes, um, the free print, some free printable uh, functional boxes that I had, planner Kate functional boxes, all of them were way too big. I ended up having to make my own. Uh, but then down here at the bottom, I'm also going to have um, space for planning Annie, and I plan to extend that a bit um, on the... Um, the weekend days for planning any because that's typically when I do my batch recording. So that's going to be the layout for how I plan to use uh, the weekly setup and make sure I capture all those things uh, that I want to plan. So that's what this is going to look like. I'll set that up with some pen as I'm getting right, uh, you know, right 
into the week and ready to go. I'm not going to do any setup for the daily pages. Those are blank. I'm going to leave them that way. I do plan to, um, you know, capture any notes, gratitude, um, you know, news headlines, um, my da daily Bible verse, any journaling, it just anything that I feel like I want to put there. Um, you know, things that require a bit more writing than the weekly space allows, those are all going to go in the daily pages. So that is the setup for the month of April uh, in my Hobonichi Cousin and in my uh, new bullet journal for the rest of the year. I really hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed seeing the um, updates to my planning system as we head into the second quarter of the year. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Are you making changes to your planner? How are you rethinking or switching things up? Are you ready for spring? Are you spring cleaning your planner system? I would love to hear all about that in the comments down below. If you have questions about anything I've talked about today, leave those down below and I will make sure to answer them. And uh, like this video, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and got value out of it. That way I know. And as always, subscribe to Planet Annie for more content like this. Thanks for planning with me.